Last month, the former head of the Election Commission in the Democratic Republic of Congo allied himself with the M23 rebel group. Cornel Nanga, former chairman of the Electoral Commission known as SENI, signed an agreement in Nairobi with the M23 and other militants, prompting an angry response from the DR government. The M23 is one of the largest of the more than 100 militant groups operating in the eastern DRC. It says it is defending the rights of ethnic Tutsis. However, its raids on communities and use of mass executions and sexual assault as weapons have led the U.S. and the U.N. to designate it as a terror organization. The Kinshasa government has struggled for two decades to bring peace to the vast country's eastern provinces. However, its failure to do so have led rising anger against UN peacekeeping forces there, and Kinshasa late last year ended a joint stabilization force of troops from the East African Community Nations. The M23 says the Congo River Alliance is designed to advance peace in the region. Recently, my colleague Peter Klotem spoke with Lawrence Kanyuka, a spokesperson for the M23. Kanyuka called the alliance a platform for pro progress. Which has with goal to end the suffering of Congolese, the bad governors, to restore the dignity of Congolese, to resolve the root causes of conflict for a lasting place in our country. It's actually a good thing that has never happened to DRC. Finally, we have somebody of that caliber of uh, Mr. Nukone Nanga, who joined forces with M23 with other politicians to actually end the suffering of Congolese. This platform is open to all Congolese. Kanyuk also said that areas under M23 control are peaceful and stable. However, human rights groups have documented hundreds of cases of mass rapes, murder, and other possible war crimes. Nanga had intended to run in last month's presidential election in the DRC. He had been in several disputes with President Felix Shekedi, who was declared the winner of the election. Nanga went into exile a few months later. Peter Kilote today spoke with Abraham Luakabunga, the spokesperson for the Union for Democracy and Social Progress, Shekedi's party. He says there is considerable anger over Nanga's alliance with rebels and called it a kind of a rebellion. We are really, um, you know, surprised with uh, this uh, this kind of, uh, you know, kind of situation that Mr. Nanga is calling on the table. And uh, we do uh, encourage the government we, uh, that wrote a letter to uh, authorities of Kenya asking them, you know, to... Uh, to stop Mr. Nanga out of uh, our constitution. You cannot take arms, you know, to fight against your, your country. This is, uh, Nanga is a new rebel for uh, rebel leaders since he has uh, get in touch with the M23. This situation is not good at all. And we condemn that uh, situation firmly. Luakabanga says it's uh, particularly surprising that Nanga and other rebel groups signed the alliance while the country is still waiting for final results in last month's election. Shishikedi was declared provisional winner over, uh, over about 20 other candidates. Results for legislators and provincial governors have not yet been announced. In Algeria, an Algerian court said Monday authorities had taken 10 police officers into custody over the case of a man found near death in the landing gear of a plane. The man was found on December 28th at a Paris airport suffering from severe hypothermia after he snuck into the landing gear of an Air Algeria flight from Oran in western Algeria. The court said in a statement that an investigation was opened Sunday against the 10 officers who have been placed in pre-trial detention for involuntary offenses endangering the lives of people on board the aircraft and others. An Air Algeria mechanic is under investigation, the court said. And the Colorado River supports the largest cities in the southwestern U.S. One of them is well ahead in adapting to a drier future. Matt Dibble has the second story in our five-part series, Rivers at Risk. The sprawling city of Las Vegas is in one of the most arid regions of the United States. This dazzling oasis with a reputation for excess would seem to be an unlikely model for water conservation. But the city is a water success story. Bronson Mack is outreach director 
with the Southern Nevada Water Authority. Our community's consumption of Colorado River water has declined by approximately 30 percent, while our community's population has also increased by more than 750,000 people during that same time. We are providing less water to more people today than we did two decades ago, and that's because of water conservation. The biggest savings come from recycling wastewater and sending it back into nearby Lake Mead to be used again. Daniel Fisher is deputy general manager of the Clark County Water Reclamation District. We have the Colorado River system. We take water out of the Boulder Basin of the Lake Mead. We bring it into the Las Vegas Valley as our drinking water source. When the water goes back in the sanitary sewer system, we bring that to a treatment plant that's close to the Las Vegas wash. We treat the water to very, very high standards. The water goes back into, back into Lake Mead, and then we reuse it again. Which means that some of the wastewater being treated here could end up flowing from a tap on the Las Vegas Strip again in just a few days. And the only way that can happen is if we treat this water very, very effectively. This state-of-the-art facility lets microorganisms do most of the work. We have to treat to a level that's above 98% of the other treatment plants around the country. So after this water leaves here, it's going to travel to the Las Vegas Wash, which is just to our east. Then it goes into the Las Vegas Bay of Lake Mead. And at that point, it's re-entered the Colorado River system. For every liter of water returned to the system, Las Vegas can remove a liter without counting against its overall allocation. For the 60% of water that never becomes wastewater, the city has taken other steps, like limiting swimming pool size and evaporative cooling systems. Grass lawns, which are notorious water consumers, are banned in new housing developments. And the city pays homeowners to replace existing grass with desert landscaping. And to make sure the rules are enforced, there is a team of water cops. Runoff due to misaligned sprinklers along the sidewalk. Water is running down into the gutter. Johnny Cerrone is one of 14 wastewater investigators who patrol the city looking for infractions, like watering on the wrong day or faulty sprinklers. We are actually out here to, most of everything is to educate people. Most of the people, they are grateful when we let them know that something is wrong and they're like, oh, that's why my water bill is so high. As successful as these efforts have been, the region will still need to conserve more. To meet new requirements, Nevada has agreed to cut around one quarter of its current yearly allocation for the next three years. Nigeria's president on Monday suspended the country's Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation over the use of a private bank account for ministry financial transactions in the government's social welfare program. Beta Edu was suspended with immediate effect while Nigeria's anti-corruption agency carries out a thorough investigation of all ministry financial transactions presidential spokesman Julie Ngelari said in a statement. It is said the investigation would extend to the entire framework of Nigeria's social investment programs. President Ibola Tinubu was elected last year after promising to rid Africa's most populous country of chronic corruption and extreme poverty. His government said the suspension follows his commitment to uphold the highest standards of integrity, transparency and accountability in how Nigeria's resources are managed. Edu's suspension comes days after local media cited an official memo in which she directed that 585 million naira worth of grants meant for vulnerable groups should be paid into a private account. A decision that the minister's office said followed due to process. The minister has denied any wrongdoing. In a country where the government is austerity measures have further squeezed millions of people facing extreme levels of poverty many nigerians criticized the use of a private bank account for the grants program and called for the minister to be fired the office of nigeria's accountant general of the federation said in a statement that 
such funds are meant to be sent directly from government accounts to their beneficiaries. Edu's predecessor, meanwhile, reported to Nigeria's Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on Monday as it investigated alleged corruption in the dis in the disbursement of public funds during her time as minister. Sadia Omar Farouk said on social media that she was at the commissioner's office to offer clarifications in respect of some issues that the commission is investigating.